Modern day warrior, mean, mean stride. Today's Tom Sawyer, mean, mean pride. Da 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 da. Blah blah blah. Da 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 da. Blah 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 blah. Da 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 da. Blah blah blah. What? Already? Rock out! Well, hey, another episode of I'd Rather Be Shaving. We're doing the biggest myths of the wet shaving world, the biggest fails, the biggest mysteries. That's right, folks. Why did you introduce? Usually, I'm the guy who does the whole like, "Hey, everybody, how you doing?" Bro? I don't know. Just kind of jumped in. I don't know. I it's guess like, I've just taken, uh, you know. You gotta rush. Yeah, man, rush. <laughs> So anyways, that happened. Welcome to today's show, folks. This is I'd Lather Be Shaving. I'm Douglas Smith from phoenixshaving.com. And to my left... Matt Pesarczyk, Razor Important. Today we are going to be dispelling That was myths. weird. That was me. It was a lisp you dispelled. I just... Dis 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 dispelling beat. Anyways, that's what we're going to be doing today, and you're going to enjoy every freaking second of it. <laughs> he, he guarantees it. I guarantee it. Fact or fiction, Gillette has never produced an inferior blade. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever do you mean, Matt? Exhibit A, the legendary Crowman blade in an orange wrapper. They should have had him dressed up as a crow magnet. Yeah, they could, that'd be kind of good. So this is the only blade Gillette ever had to recall because of inferiority. What? Inferiority. 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 <laughs> yes, go on. Uh, and it was called Chroman because it was a chromium uh, plated or coated stainless steel blade. Chrome steel. Chromium. Well, there's no such thing as chrome steel. I've been saying chrome steel, haven't I? For you the kind last of. Couple yeah, you kind of did. Carbon steel. Carbon steel. Yeah. Well, this was. You know, people have heard of stainless steel. That really made its debut in the '50s, '60s with Wilkinson and Gillette was doing a chick. But Gillette, well, Wilkinson kind of beat him to the punch. Well, they did. they did it first, didn't do anything it, it with it. It didn't do well. It didn't do well. Well, they had didn't Wilkinson have some spies in there, too? Yes. Yes. Another so story for another time. This came out in 1930, 1931 era, in the new era for Gillette. And they were trying to do stainless steel and beat everyone to the punch. Unfortunately, the coating, the chromium coating to go over the stainless steel that makes it comfortable was not up to par. And so this was a very horrible shave. People were throwing these things away left and right. Gillette had to put out a public apology. Huge ad they took full out. page. Yeah, and to basically apologize for their inferior blades. And, and some of the guys in Gillette, some of their um, lawyers weren't saying, "Don't do that. Don't ever admit." And they, but they, it was brilliant. Yeah, it caught everyone's attention, and yeah. it, you know, it, it aided in the experience people had with the next blade they released. Right. So people sometimes ask, "Are there any Gillette blades that are collectible?" This is probably the only blade that Gillette ever made that's collectible, only because it was recalled and only made for like one year. It's like the Atari game, ET. Something like that. So Gillette has never, ever made an inferior blade. Myth. Okay. Well, I believe that's a rest. Yeah, let's put that to rest. So next up, in the same era, in the Depression, the 20s, World War One era. Keyword era. Yeah. People were having a hard time getting blades. Blades were really reserved for soldiers. It was hard. The Depression, they were making limited numbers. And so all these little blade sharpeners started coming out. So there's been this myth that you can sharpen a blade and get more life out of a double-edged shaver. Yes, that's, I think it's partially true, however. Because okay. I have read in a few places more than one. I know we've tested the Vaseline glass on our last, our- The many, uranium glass. Yeah, Vaseline glass too was called during our depression era glass, uh, many episodes back. And it did fail us, but I thought back after that, and we used a modern blade on it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, carbon. I've read in a few more places, more than one place that- it used to be carbon steel? Carbon steel. Not uh, chrome actually, steel. Not chrome steel. Carbon, Carbon steel. steel isn't really a thing <laughs> until our last episode. That it's a was. legend in your own mind. Anyways, so we might have to test this one at some point. I think that's a great idea for another episode. And another time. We'll test this. But but in general, all in all, with the cost of blades being so cheap, pennies. You, don't, you don't have to really worry about this anymore. So I'm going to say unconfirmed but highly suspicious myth. Can we say that together? Yes. Unconfirmed, but a highly suspicious myth. <laughs> Moving on. So, there's been another myth out there 
A lot of people come across the Gillette blue tips, the Gillette red tips, and they, you know. I'm the, one of those people. Yeah. Trip over them sometimes. Yeah. The, the, the regular flare tip came in a tan case. And so some people think that they've, they've seen a tan tip razor or another other kind of tip razors. There's a black tip razor. But there's been this legendary idea of a green tip, and I'm not sure exactly where this starts. So the idea is that Gillette produced a green tip razor. And that is more than likely something like this you see. This is actually a black tip razor from 1951, 50, 50, 52 in there. And this tip sometimes starts turning green with age. It's plastic, it starts aging out, and it's really, I mean, it's not really, really black, but I mean, if you compare it to, to that or something yeah, else see the green. that's really black here, you can see, see more of the contrast that it has. Emerald. A, yeah, like an emeraldy kind of translucent green kind of color to it. And it's not Man. anything, yeah, it's not anything that, This is green. Yeah. And it's sticky. What's up with that? I didn't clean it after I used it. Tip. <sighs> But, uh, so this is another, you know, idea that there's a, a, a special secret limited edition Gillette green tip razor. Green tip Gillette? Myth. What else we got? So another, another big idea that I hear all the time, and I'm sure you do too, talking to customers, wet shavers out there, the chat rooms, the forums, is that if you want a super close shave, you've got to get an open comb razor. That an open comb razor, somehow the combs themselves allow for more blade to show through or something to that effect. And then an open comb razor is the closest shave you can get, whereas a solid guard razor like, like this is somehow not as close of a shave. Have you heard this? I hear it a lot, yeah. Now, what do you think about this idea? I think it's bull. You think it's bull? Yeah. And why do you think that? Because, I, well, because I know it is. <laughs> I've owned but many facts, open comb. reasons, logic. Oh well, because you can't, still can't get to the blade. Get uh, the blade. It's it's still a guard. Right. It's a guard, no matter what. The the guard touches your skin. It doesn't matter if that guard is serrated or if the guard is solid. The way that any razor is going to shave is going to come down to the blade gap, and the blade angle. And on the Gillette adjustable razors, like a Fat Boy, a Slim, they changed both. They were changing angle and gap. Yeah. Like razors today, like the Progress and stuff that are adjustable, usually only change gap alone. Um, the Rockwells or the Above the Ties that also change gap or just the different height the base plates yeah. to change that. Um, but but the, visually, it looks more aggressive. Yeah, it looks kind of scary. It's got teeth. I mean, like that's just a human thing. Yeah. Same thing with blade exposure. People look at that and think the same thing. Like, oh, yeah. it's aggressive. Yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be aggressive at all. Yeah. You really got to try it out. Every razor can be, you know, its own thing. Try an adjustable Gillette on number nine, and that's going to be a heck of a close shave, and it's a solid guard. On the contrary, I'm sure there's plenty of open comb razors that are super mild. A double open comb. There you the go. The DOC. There you go. And if you have another open comb razor you, you've used that was super mild, please leave a comment of some of these models that you can look for if you're looking for a mild shave. So, open comb is somehow super aggressive. Myth. Okay. Another one we hear a lot of, and I don't know where this idea came from. Back in the day, you're in Germany and you stop at a tourist location and they're gonna sell you a beautiful oh, go on. a beautiful leader hosen that, that Douglas wears in his off time. That is good. Um, but they usually would sell these seven day sets and it was the days of the week written on the spine. You know, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now interestingly, a true seven day set comes with eight razors. One to use while your other seven are being sharpened by your butler. But the whole idea of seven different razors, besides massive upkeep and massive upfront investment, was that somehow the steel needs to rest in between shaves. Like the steel is such a delicate flower, flower that needs to calm down and rest. Stop vibrating or whatever it does. After it's been used for maybe 20 or 30 minutes once a day. So the first thing that comes to my mind when I think of steel needing to rest is like chef knives. Like, they need I to rest? They don't get a rest, they hardly get a smoke break. Oh, that's true, I never thought about that. Yeah, these chefs are cooking with knives and cutting it with stainless steel, carbon steel knives all day long, every day, and they're workhorses, and they don't have to let them rest. It's true, they don't have to rest. And I mean, I know that after you- So they're just trying to sell more. I really think they're trying to sell more. I mean, think about it. Are they still selling these? Maybe some obscure companies are still making seven day sets. I usually see old vintage German seven day sets from like the 40s, 50s, right, 30s. Right. Another question I always get is, man, are they 
are they seven times more you know costly in terms of like okay if one razor's worth a hundred bucks is the whole set worth seven hundred dollars right the answer is no most people don't need seven razors and they're all identical so every time we get a seven day set in you i break usually break up. up the set <laughs> unfortunately and people are like hey i got wednesday <laughs> it's like my underwear <laughs> what if the seven it gets gone so you have, you have one for each day of the week? It's true. Are they written on the back, like on the tag? On the front. Did Fran write it for you? No, I can write now. Oh, okay. Well, um, so this whole myth that steel needs to rest, from everything I know well, of... Chrome steel might need to rest. Chrome steel. Well, Let's put that to rest right now. Yeah. No such thing. But, but steel needing to rest, myth. Well, wait, I want to do that with you. Okay. So steel, steel needing, needing to rest, rest myth. myth. One more time. So steel, steel needing, needing to rest, myth. myth. Okay, that felt good. Yeah, it's all really Florida yeah. water from Florida? Actually, the oh, most popular contrary. Florida water out there, Murray and Landman, is from New York. What is Florida water even used for? Mostly voodoo. Voodoo? Voodoo, voodoo, voodoo. No. says Bombay. Here, the whole family, including Ma. That's good. Thank you. I can't Friday nights at the Bikini Lounge. You'll find me. DJ Cutter. <laughs> we won't get into that. But no, folks. It is, in fact, from New York, not Florida at all. Yeah, so that's a myth. But it's used for voodoo? Fact. Cat got your tongue, Doug? Ha, 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 So one of the last myths that we just wanted to dispel today had to do with handle size. So size I'm a big guy. Matters. Yeah, does size matter for razor handle? So I'm a big guy. Glad I got specific there. I'm 6'8", oh. you know, you would maybe think I need a big giant razor like this. This is the longest handle Gillette ever put on a double edge razor. What's the length of that? 109 millimeters. That's right, it's the 109. That's right. Um, now truth be Never told- Never seen Top Gun, go on. Truth be told, when I very first got into wet shaving, my first razor was a Mercur long handle. And I thought the same thing, I was like, man, I'm 6'8", I need a big razor. Yeah. I got big hands. Yeah. And I mean, I know you're kind of short, so maybe the tuck away would be a better size for you. Tuck away? I don't even like the sound of that. Now <laughs> this, my whole thing with it is, you're coming from cartridge razors, and they're light and they're flimsy, and you get involved in wet shaving. Right. The first thing you want to do is gravitate to this big, burly handle. It just feels right. It's a good weight and everything else. But it's a common, I don't want to say mistake, but it's a common thing that people do when they get yeah. into wet shaving. Especially that now, happens. the that return happens. to wet shaving is where you're seeing this happen. So people are... People are, you know, stocking up on long handles. They're swapping heads out. And the thing is, handles and heads are almost well. They're calibrated to a certain extent. You know, for the fulcrum point, if it comes with that handle, chances are it was that handle was working to the design. So a lot of times, it takes more uh, time and effort to uh, get the handle right rather than the head these days. Yeah. So, but people are so quick to throw on a, a big handle. Well, and to help disprove some of this myth, we're gonna get jiggy with it. <laughs> And we are going to try to uh, load up different blades into long handles and short handle razors. Wow, that sounds really difficult, Matt. What a challenge. I can't wait for this challenge to happen today. Well, there's a twist. Oh, there's always a twist. So, we thought we'd put this myth to the test. It's a myth, it's a myth, it's not a myth. Yes. And show that no matter how big your hands are, or if you have two left hands like Doug, you can still load a blade, you can still handle a Gillette razor, or any double-edged razor for that matter. Can't pick your nose, however. No. No. Or anyone else's. Well, it depends. Um, <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and try to race to see who can load a blade oh. using our oven mitts. All right. Gentlemen, on your marks. There's only me here. It's like saying y'all, and there's only one person I was there. talking to myself. Oh, okay, fair enough. On your marks. Get set. Go. God. I really think I am going to win this one. Now, can you use your mouth? My mouth? Damn, you already got the damn blade out? Ah. Oh my. God. No! Don't miss this. Ah! Oh, that's dangerous. I have it so close. Ah! For the win! 
once again, I beat Douglas's ass. I don't know. No, I had mine together. A few seconds before your. I don't know, people. Let's go to an instant replay because it's like it's like one of those races you see that win by a nose. Yeah, I know. I won. I won by a head, a razor head. I mean, I was just that that much that much closer. So, anywho, it just goes to show that no matter how big your hands are, you can still shave with one of these. It's true, folks. And don't forget, you hold these things more like a pencil, not a paintbrush. Good point, Matt. And you know, and much like a pencil or an artist's paintbrush, you need the little subtle motions. Mm. Little, little mo there's little tiny muscles in your finger. In fact, if you're thinking while you're shaving, you can actually subtly control angles. It sounds crazy, I know. Yeah. But it, I'm telling you, it does affect it. Knurling does help as well. It's like a surgeon. Just like a surgeon. Have you ever seen a scalpel? They're tiny. I have, I have, yeah, I have seen a scalpel. Dexterity counts. Laces out. Dan Marino should die of gonorrhea and rot in hell. Thank you for tuning in to this week's <laughs> episode, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's been a real pleasure dispelling myths and such. Myth! But I'll tell you what isn't a myth. You. And I want you to like this video. I want you to subscribe to our show. And to I comment as well. Because when you do, you can possibly win. What do you got for them? I have an apple shave and soap, my friend. Awesome. This week, you could be a big winner. You so could be in outer space. It's true. Space is the place. We'll see you next week in another episode of I'd Rather Be Shaving. With Doug and Matt. Ciao. See you then. Chicken broth. Are my number one. A guy. Alright, rolling, rolling, rolling.